Hey, Dave Lacalle with Head Games Motorworks. Today, we're going to go over a 1,000 horsepower S55 teardown. First thing I noticed was on the deck surface that there was some copper spray. Now, I know this is just a preference thing. I, I, I feel like I could voice my opinion here, but obviously somebody has a different one. And I don't think that whenever you're using an MLS gasket, copper is just not really a thing to do because when you use an MLS, it's supposed to adhere to the surface here. And if you use a good enough milling machine, you don't have to worry about using a copper spray. It's going to take up those little crevices and all that jazz. And it's just not needed. Now, when this head came here a long time ago, we took notice of these cracks. You can see these cracks right here. Now, there's cracks. I think it's hard to find an S55 that doesn't have these cracks. So the cracks usually go down the spark plug hole and they go to the seats and we've never had issues with these cracks. And there is really not much to say about them. They're, they're from a hot spot and you look at this one, you see how it broke off here. And there's some cracks here. There's some cracks here. All these cracks. Oh, wait, let's look at this one. You notice how this one had a valve seat put in it. Somebody, before we worked on it, put a, looks like a copper, bronze, or maybe beryllium. They put a valve seat in it. And it's not the best looking thing in their world. But they put a seat in it. We made note of this and how bad this hole looked. And that was all on the invoice. Customer decided to move forward with it. And, you know, these heads aren't cheap. Some people might be wondering why we would use a head that has obvious cracks. And that's because there are Subaru heads that have cracks. These get cracks. There are certain heads that get cracks and there's no water around this area. And we always leave it up to the customer if they want to move forward. Now we've made 1100 with these things, 1200 horsepower with the cracks there and never had an issue. So we just, but I don't want to be married to it. Nobody wants to be married to the ugly girl and that includes head games. So if you want to move forward with your head and it's cracked, that's up to you. But this particular head had issues with cylinder number four from before we did the work to it and after and that's what we're going to uncover first thing we did now i'm not showing you what the fueler gauge is but a straight edge is the first thing that if something came in here with a head gasket issue we're going to put a straight edge on it and make sure that it's flat now the problem is that you have to find two spots that are flat and as you can see here we made like a little spot here so that we can put it right there and make sure it's flat the head was actually flat but had a head gasket issue but more on that in a little bit. I took notice that the seats, the 45 degree angle is now rounded and it's rounded on pretty much all the intakes, all the exhaust. Now this thing actually didn't really have much dyno time. They didn't do a full tune on it. They didn't get that far. And I noticed there's a lot of damage for such little time it being together. And this particular cylinder is clean. If you look at all the rest of them, all these others had some kind of gook in them, you know, some kind of oil, some burnt oil, but this one was clean. And that definitely shows that there is some kind of leakage. You can also see right here that it burnt through here. So seats are round. See this going on. We have a lot going on in this cylinder here, but there's actually a lot more going on in the rest of the head. Looking at the valves, this is the intake valve and the 45 degree angle looks a little beat up. Looks like the valve was beating into the valve seat, some valve float, and the valve train was absolutely not happy. It also looked like some oil was coming on the backside of the valve, but the, the 45 degree angle getting beat is a sure sign of something going awry. Now the exhaust, more of the same, this whole 45, is just round. And here's, here's the bigger thing I know. So the, this valve is bent, but the biggest problem I saw is if you notice the color on these valves, how it's blue and purple and all these different colors, 
That is a sure sign of heat. There is ways that we can tell that you're one of them guys that likes to boom, 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 and just shoot off flames, and you're going to be the, the two-step guy without you telling us. And heat is absolutely one of those things that tells us that you are a flamethrower and not a horsepower grower. You see on the tip of the valve, there is damage from the rocker, and this is from the float. This is from it just beating into the rocker. More of the same here. This is a, on the exhaust side. Now the exhaust is gonna take a brunt of the heat. It's gonna take a brunt of all the damage because, well, where do you think the flame goes? when you know it's backfiring and doing all kinds of crazy stuff, it's gonna go on the exhaust side. And that's why you see some color here on the back side of the valve. You see some blues that's still on the intake. There's a lot of a whole lot of heat going through this. And you know, some people might want to blame the tuner. Sorry, one last thing before I look at this one. Look at this one. This one was about to burn. If you got something hot enough to burn a Faria valve, you were getting at it, dude. Like, Faria valves are not easy to burn. Uh, I think I've seen just a few of them in my career, and this one right here was starting to burn. Now, some people might want to blame the shop, and they want to blame the tuner, they want to blame the cylinder head guy, they want to blame the valve train, they want to make, they want to place blame in all these different places, but the truth is that none of us could make that happen. We can't create heat. Well, actually, let me circle back to that. Maybe a tuner can create heat, but he can't create all the valve train issues that we're seeing here, the shop putting it together, they're just putting stuff together. And in some ways, so are we. We're just putting it together and we're just putting it together in the mathematical way that everything needs to be set at. Otherwise, when you have a lot of heat, when it's going purples and blues and you're having head gasket issues and you're burning stuff up, that is a true sign that it has nothing to do with the people who are working on your car. It's you. Now the shop originally, these guys are, I'm not going to mention names, but this shop is actually a really smart shop. I enjoy working with him. I actually enjoyed talking to him about this whole situation because he asked very important questions and I could tell there's a lot of intelligence there. And that's what made me feel confident that this wasn't a installation error. This was more of a customer error. And his initial thing was the head gasket. And when he brought this gasket to, I'm sorry, it's really hard for me to, to hold it. But the, uh, on the exhaust side, there is like a little tiny lip that goes inside the chamber, um, right on the corners here. Now I don't have a dowel and I'm just kind of holding it by hand. Uh, that was his first inkling that, you know, there was a problem with the gasket or I should say the port or the chamber, the way we did it. Now this chamber has set world records. It's never been an issue. We've never had a head gasket problem until today. And what I noticed was if you look here, let me check this out. This is how you can see the gaskets. You see right here in between the cylinders, how the discoloration is going on. And that's telling us that there is a head gasket failure going in between the cylinder and it's like the head's lifting or you don't have, both sides, both sides you gotta look at. And the head gas is just not completely sealing and there's so much heat in it, there's no way it's a gasket problem. If it was a gasket problem, it would just burn the gasket. It's gonna torch the head, but you see right here, this is where our guy started really torching it in the corner there. And I see lots of heat. So if the chamber was actually an issue with the head gasket, they would all be burnt just like this because it would be an actual issue. On the intake and on the exhaust, you would see burn marks all in the corners here, and that's not what you see. So let's just say, hypothetically, the head games chamber was the issue. If the head games chamber was the issue, it wouldn't cause all the heat in the valve. It wouldn't cause the valve float. It wouldn't cause somebody to use copper. It wouldn't, there's so many different things that it wouldn't cause um, that can only be caused by excessive heat and by misuse. This is the kind of shit that you would expect Frank, if you guys remember Frank. Frank beats the crap out of his Supra 
This is the kind of stuff I would expect to see out of Frank. <laughs> Except Frank's stuff looked absolutely perfect. Maybe that's part of the tuner and the MoTeC, not an OEM ECU. Uh, Toby will put a, hopefully we'll remember, we'll put a link up here, you guys can watch it. That's, Frank is crazy hard on stuff and his stuff looked perfect after years of pow powing and doing all kinds of crazy crap for Instagram. Let's go on to the springs. For valve springs, we had the GSC conicals. Now these are the same conicals that go in all the fast A90 Supras. Look at the titanium retainer. It looks great in there. I don't see any problems at all. Now this valve spring is not actually meant for the cylinder head. Head Games just happens to have the secret sauce to be able to use this spring in uh, a whole bunch of different applications. Cam journals look delicious. I don't see any oiling issues. Usually these uh, will take a hit because these, I really don't know how the oiling system works on S55, but I'm gonna guess every time something happens to one, it takes out these journals first and I really don't see anything going on here. And um, I got nothing to say. The exhaust port, the exhaust port actually looks like there is some oil going through it. There's other issues. So I don't, um, I, I, I'm not going to say that it shouldn't have oil going through it. There was some oil in the chamber. The shop did do a leak down and they said that the short block was good. What does the future hold for this cylinder head? Well, we suggested that the guy replace it because, really because of the spark plug hole. This spark plug hole and the cracks in the cylinder head really bring us to and, and it's always been a cylinder number four issue. And I just don't think that we can solve that problem. The only way we can fix the spark plug hole is to do an insert and the insert turns into a glow plug. It's not something you want. So really, um, and we've done other heads for this shop as well and never had any problems. And he was actually surprised that we had a problem with this one. But I, I tried to explain to him that you know, as we've talked about that, it's really just not the cylinder head and I don't think it's them. I think it's the customer, but you know, hey, we are all wrong sometimes. So we're gonna maybe use, reuse some of these parts in a different cylinder head once the customer gets his stuff together and uh, we'll do another CNC port. Now we actually did correct the combustion chamber in, uh, since we have a machine now, uh, we corrected the combustion chamber on our later ports, but this is an early one and it did have that issue, um, but it's never been an issue. And, uh, you know, it's made big power. So that's where we are. And that's where we're gonna end it today. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Toodles. Head games!